Uh, here's one. Joseph wants to know, Bruce, if you were around for WrestleMania two, when Vince brought up the idea for three cities to host it, what would your reaction have been? So as a reminder, in year one, we ran Madison Square Garden, but in year two, we thought, hey, what if we had a presence in New York, one in Chicago, and one in Los Angeles? I don't think it worked as well. We know three came back bigger than ever uh, at the Silver Dome, but talk to us about the three-city concept. Would you have been in favor of that or not so much? I thought it was genius. I, I truly did at the time. And, and you got to understand, too, uh, I was 22, 23 years old at that point. So I thought, oh, my God, this is incredible because in my head, I'm going, oh, gosh, you've got three venues you're drawing from. This is insane. This is great. You know, three big shows in one night. And you're close circuiting into them and everything. Oh, this is genius. As time goes on, learning more about business and learning more about, you know, closed circuit pay-per-view and, and things of that nature, the cost of production um disaster yeah horrible idea uh but in the moment at the time i thought it was one of the greatest things i'd ever heard in my life because again you know i uh, I've, I've told this story of, of finding the ring magazine from the 30s where the guy talked about how there would be a time in our lives where we'll be able to watch a championship fight from london or tokyo or new york and you don't even have to leave your home and you'll be able to witness it live and you'll pay for it. And at the time I was thinking that, it, that he was talking about closed circuit television. Lo and behold, later on, the advent of pay-per-view, he was actually talking about pay-per-view in the 30s. So I just thought that was that was incredible. Three different venues, man. It makes it bigger and you. But not thinking about the added cost of production and communication between all three events back and forth, uh, listening to the horror stories of that now is, is hilarious, but, uh, thought it was great in the moment. I would never do it, <laughs> especially, you know, learning from that mistake and learning from all the pitfalls that come along with it. Let's do one here from uh, Dr. Adam K. He says at SummerSlam 89, Roddy Piper wrapped up a backstage interview by telling Mean Gene he's going to go eat a garage. Do you have any idea what Piper meant by that? Eat a garage. Yeah, that is a weird phrase. He was hungry. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. You ever eat a garage? I haven't yet, but I mean, I'm down to try. Well, uh, Robert wants to know, why did the WWE debut the winged Eagle belt at the main event with Hogan Andre instead of WrestleMania four, if the idea was to hold the tournament for an undisputed championship, shouldn't a new champ get the new belt on a bigger stage? Yeah, that is an interesting idea. You know, there was a pre-tape promo that night with Hogan where he's wearing the old belt, but when he comes to the ring that night, he's wearing the new belt and that new belt is the one that winds up over Andre's shoulder, ultimately is held up, blah, blah, blah. If you have to do over again, maybe that does make more sense. Debuting the belt at WrestleMania, but we just weren't thinking that way back then. Maybe no, yeah, you know, it wasn't. I don't think it was that big of a deal, and it wasn't. And it really wasn't that much of a departure, too. It, it was, but it wasn't. Uh, Bobby says in a recent interview with Busted Open, Ric Flair said Kurt Angle approached him in 1998 and asked Rick if he should go to the WWF or WCW. Rick then says he told Kurt to go to the WWF and made the call for Vince for him. Has Bruce ever heard this story? I have not. JC tube 10 says, could you name some wrestlers who were seriously considered to become WWE champion, but plans changed at the last minute. So we've always heard of these dreaded plans change pal, but was there one that you think, man, that guy could have been the guy. Like I've heard a lot of people say that. DiBiase was probably supposed to have been world champion. Just didn't happen. Are there other examples you can think of? No, DiBiase was never supposed to be champion. Ever. I think people would have liked for Ted to have been champion. And I think that's where, you know, that comes into play is that Teddy would have been a great champion and people looked at him as 
holy cow, you know, he would be a great departure from the traditional babyface champions that were the norm. And I think Teddy could have carried it and would have been a good champion, but that was that was not something that was ever seriously considered because again, you're, you're looking at a place that was a babyface territory that always had a babyface champion and was about building heroes. It was about building mega stars. And Ted was such a strong heel that that wouldn't have fit at the time. So yeah, Teddy would have been great. But that wasn't something that was seriously considered. It was discussed. Yes, it was discussed. But it wasn't discussed in a way that, you know, yes, we're going to do this. It was brought up and then promptly told about why that that won't and can't happen. Um, you know, guys that were considered, Bam Bam Bigelow was considered at one point. Um, as you're looking at, on the way to on the way to Randy, I think, um, you know, is Bam Bam that guy that becomes the guy and becomes the champion? Um, God, you know, there there have been others. You know, we've, we've talked about Ahmed Johnson. We talked about Ahmed Johnson on this show. God, he'd be a great champion, and you know, look at him. <laughs> Unfortunately, the bell had to ring. Um, Bam Bam just you know came in hot and then fizzled um after they'd seen him they'd seen him so you know guys like that through the years but um I'm trying to think of like a like a recent in the last 20 years and and nobody really really comes to mind because on on a lot of it you know, they did happen eventually. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson here to tell you a little more about what adfreeshows.com is all about. Get early ad free access to more than a dozen of your favorite wrestling podcasts every single week, starting at just nine bucks. That's less than 20 cents an episode each month. And yes, you can listen to them all directly through Apple Podcasts or your regular podcast apps. How easy is that? Ad free shows also has thousands of hours worth of bonus content and docu-series like title chase, Eric fires back conversations with Conrad and the insiders plus new series like the book with David Crockett, Monday mailbags with Mike Kyoto and Nick Patrick and a whole lot more. And you want to talk about early. You can't get any earlier than listening to the shows live. You can be a part of the live studio audience as we record the podcast. Plus ride shotgun alongside your favorite childhood heroes for live watch alongs, Q and A's and other interactive experiences every single month. Come on now, see for yourself what thousands of other wrestling fans from around the world have discovered that adfreeshows.com is the best value in wrestling. Check it out today. And Hey, when you do the first week is completely free at freeshows.com. <laughs> 